welcome to the kitchen. Today I am working on getting some salsa canned up. I will be water bath canning this salsa and the recipe I have is from the guide to preserving and this book was published by the company Ball. Um, the recipe I have is going to be the spicy salsa and the only difference is, is I'm not adding the dry roasted peppers because I think they're disgusting, so I'm not gonna put that in there. And I won't be putting in as many jalapenos. The National Center for Food Safety Preservation, something like that, um, I went on their website and they had mentioned a salsa recipe and they were talking about how you can use any pepper, a sweet pepper, a bell pepper, a jalapeno pepper, any pepper you want in with the salsa and it's not going to change the acidity level in it. Um, so that is what I'm going to be doing. These are, I don't even know what kind this is. It's not spicy. It's kind of like bell pepper. I believe the farmer that I got these from, she said they were called a believe she said cow horn pepper I don't know but sometimes people just make up names for stuff so I don't know what kind of this is but she said it was kind of like a mix between the um like a bell pepper and a poblano pepper so I think it'll be good in there I'm just gonna get this chopped up I am quadrupling this batch so I should be able to get about I think like 24 pints I will be able to get and when I am eating salsa I like everything to be really small because I like when I get the chip I want everything I want onions I want cilantro I want the peppers I want everything in one bite and um, that is really important to me that all of the food is the same, the same size. I love this pan. Um, you can fit so much in this. I have not bought a roaster pan yet. I just have this for right now. I'm able to put a lot in here. <clears throat> I made a video, and I'll link it up here, of when I did this massive meal prep. And I put like... Oh my gosh, like 20 pounds of chicken in this and I cooked it all down and got stock and I ended up getting like, I think like seven quarts out of this. So just a whole lot. I did throw these peppers in the oven uh, for like five or 10 minutes, like to kind of boil them a little bit. about six cups of chopped cilantro into this salsa and I'm really wishing that I had a like food processor that was good I have a ninja mixer and I love it it used to have a um, like food processor to it and that part like literally broke um, within uh, just a few months of having it. The whole bottom piece of it just completely came off and I was like, this is like the biggest piece of junk in the whole entire world. But the blender itself stayed intact. I don't know why the mixer, I don't know why the food processor attachment in it. Maybe I will get a new one in the future, like the processor attachment. Earlier today, I went ahead and blanched all of these tomatoes. I got these tomatoes from, it's kind of, I don't know, I want to call it a produce stand, but I guess it's like not a produce stand. I guess it kind of is a produce stand. I don't know. I'll make a video and kind of show you guys this because I grew up in a really small town. I had like one or two crappy hometown grocery stores that always sold like out of date produce that was just disgusting. And there was like one Walmart like an hour away. And that's where everyone got their food from. 
So this is kind of like, it's kind of like a farmer's market stand, but I don't know. It's kind of, it's like an actual building and they sell fresh produce from local farmers and they have fresh cut meats in there. And it's just so, it's so amazing because when you go to like a Walmart, you'll have, you know, your produce and your meats on the outside of the store perimeter, but like the inside you have like, you know, 50 different varieties of cereal, 15, 20 different types of sugar, you know, um, a half an aisle of cake mixes, just all of these things that really you don't need. And here we buy everything that I cook with. The only thing I cannot get from there, which I don't even care, is I have to order my own gluten-free flour. Um, but other than that, I can get every single thing that I need at just this little produce stand and this little meat market. This is kind of like how people used to buy groceries, you know? And the, I'll have to do a video on this place because it's just so cool. The shelves are homemade. <laughs> They're probably 50 years old. There's about 20 different seasonings. Um, they have like a small little frozen section with like french fries and stuff in the meat market area. And it's just, it's just a really cool place. Um, but that's where we get all of our meat from, and that's where I got this, all of these tomatoes from. I got a 25 pound box for $20, and these are their canning tomatoes, which just means that they might have like some bruises on them here and there, so they're not like pristinely ideal for, you know, slicing. I'm just kind of doing a rough chop because these will cook down in the oven. The recipe calls to like simmer it on the stove for like 10 minutes, like boil it. I'm not going to do that because I don't have a pan big enough for all of these tomatoes. So I'm just going to throw it in the oven and let it get to like a boil and keep it at that for about 10 or 15 minutes. I love salsa. It's one of my favorite things to eat. And when I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with this box of tomatoes, I decided I was going to make salsa because my conversion rate was much higher with salsa than it was with tomatoes. Um, if I was to make spaghetti sauce out of this, I was only going to be able to get three quarts of tomato sauce. and that is like $7 a jar. That's expensive. So I decided I didn't want to do that because the recipe called for, um, the recipe calls for you to cook down the sauce half of its weight and I just didn't want to do that. And there are other canners, there are other like people on YouTube who I've watched and they say that they just add tomato paste to it to kind of like thicken it out and I think that's probably something that I would do but because I am new to canning I didn't want to do that just yet I thought I would just go ahead and make salsa so the recipe calls for six pounds of tomatoes and that's going to get you four quarts and that's much better than six pounds and that's six pints and that's awesome so that would be about three quarts if you were to um, do it that way. So for six pounds of tomatoes, you can make salsa, or you could use 20 pounds of tomatoes and get three quarts. So the conversion was much better with the salsa. So I'm building my pantry up. I'd rather have 24 pints of salsa than three quarts of tomato sauce because we actually don't eat spaghetti a whole lot because we eat and I said this before but we actually eat a lot of ramen um, we have rice noodles and that is what we eat so we'll just take I have just recently started um, pressure canning chicken stock so I'll take a quart of that chicken stock and cook up some rice noodles to go with that and sometimes that's all we eat for a meal. Um, or I might add in 
whatever types of vegetables we have. Like I might fry up cabbage or zucchini or squash and um, add that to it and it's delicious. That's actually our kids' favorite meal. And I actually had to take out gluten and dairy from my kids and, and my daughter. My husband eats that stuff like when he's at work, but I don't buy it. And I was really sad because what kid doesn't like macaroni and cheese? But you know what? My kids actually devour chicken and noodles like the Raymond dish I was telling you about. They love that more macaroni and cheese. And it doesn't make them sick either. So my kids used to have like, I don't know, you know how like all kids complain of like stomach issues and whatnot? They would have that, but they were having like pretty severe like digestion issues. Like it was hard for them to go to the bathroom and stuff. One day we were out at our, at our restaurant, standing in line, people live in Florida and we live, our, we live our on the beach and it's where all the, it was a very popular tourist destination. So we were having to like fight tourists to go get breakfast one morning and we were standing that line of one of our favorite little breakfast shops waiting to get in. And before we had left home, I gave my little girl some chocolate milk because chocolate milk is delicious and kids love it. And I also knew it would be about an hour before we ate and I thought, well, I'll just give her some of this and it'll kind of, you know, settle her stomach just a little bit until they can eat. So we actually were able to walk there and we get there, stay in the line, everything's fine. It's warm out, but it is not, it's not like painfully hot. And she just pukes all over me. And as soon as she puked, she was totally fine. And I realized, okay, I think this is chocolate milk, but I wasn't like totally sold on it yet. But within about a year, I realized, yeah, it's definitely the dairy that's causing this issue with her. And I just took it out of her diet and she's never had a problem. Now, occasionally, like a couple times a year, we will have a dairy, like a few times a year, like maybe I'll make like a cream cheese frosting on a cake. So we eat a lot of ramen and we eat a lot of like um we eat like a lot of mexican dishes so i'm really excited to have some salsa up on the shelf because i have been canning i haven't pressure canned the black beans yet but i have canned them and put them in the freezer which i don't recommend because i did have a couple of jars bust even though i have like a two inch headspace on it um but I almost always have black beans and rice. Like, we eat that a lot. So, but if you just have hamburger meat and black beans and rice, it is a pretty, like, dry, flavorless meal. So having some fresh salsa that we can add in is going to be really good. And oh my gosh, I'll tell you right now, I've never had a chop. I'm totally new to canning, and I've never had to chop up as much food as what I chopped up today and I am really looking forward to getting like an attachment to my blender or something along that line so I can uh, do more canning but like faster because I do a lot of things like we have a farm and I homeschool my kids so being able to can is just going to be total, it's going to be total, total game changer. I'm going to be putting this in the oven for, I'm going to put it on 400 for probably like 30 minutes or so, um, maybe a little bit longer. It wants you to simmer it in the pan for like 10 minutes. So I figure if I give it about 20, 30 minutes, something like that in the oven, It'll be long enough for it to come to a boil and kind of cook down just a little bit. I have left to chop our the jalapenos and I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to put on gloves for that. I know a lot of kitchens like don't, don't have gloves and mine does because uh, back in the day 
I used to work as a dental assistant for a pediatric office and um, I would help them order for the emergency crash cart, which if you don't know, every dental office has to have one of these carts. And basically what it is, is if someone passes out for any reason, diabetic, seizure, bleeding, whatever it is, um, we can pretty much fix it uh, for the most part. So the crash car had to have everything in it from um, a tub of icing to smelling salts to gloves, just about anything you could possibly think of for an emergency situation they have. And I'm really happy that I spent time working at that office because I learned a lot. And also, it really helped me with a lot of things, kind of just like, just in general, things that people should have. Um, number one, we have, at, here at my house, I have like the best first aid kit imaginable. When we bought our house, well, well first of all, we've always had a first aid kit of some kind, but especially whenever we bought our house out here in the country, we are quite a drive from a hospital. So if something ever happened, it's not like we can just call the ambulance and say, you know, hey, come fix this problem that we have. You know, you can, but it's gonna take an ambulance some time to get out this far. Basically, f fix most things um, that can go wrong here on the farm, especially like wounds because my youngest child has no fear. I've been, I've had the supplies that I've needed here to take care of most issues that she's had. So it's always really important for every house to have a good, a good first aid kit. Like a good one, not just like some crappy band-aids, but like you really need to have like gauze and a lot of disinfectant and like not just alcohol like that's good but it's not alcohol doesn't really do a whole lot um to have like an actual surgical antiseptic antiseptic to have other supplies is just crucial and i am making sure i'm getting all of these seeds out because i want my kids to be able to enjoy the salsa and if it is too spicy they are not going to be able to enjoy it with us. So I'm really making sure I get basically every seat out. If I could give people just one cooking tip, it would be to really take time and cut everything as precise as possible because that is gonna make the biggest difference. If you cut onions, for example, in just like any size and shape, it's going to leave, you're gonna have a terrible result because some will be cooked down and sweet and caramelized and translucent and tender, but the bigger chunks will have this like gritty type crunch that is just, I think it's, Deplorable. Go to a nice, like a nice, nice restaurant, which is not often, um, but when I do, that is one thing that I notice. Number one, they're using fresh ingredients as opposed to like other places are, you, you know, you're getting like a salad with ranch or baked potato. That is not like quality fresh ingredients. But when you go to like a good restaurant where they have like a high quality smoked tuna dip or, um, something else along those lines or a salad. One thing that can really just make food taste so much better is how, is how much attention to detail someone has spent getting all of the pieces to be the exact same size. And not only that, but taking the time to cut them up incredibly small. Because even though that size is totally fine like as a home cook take that extra time cut that baby up a few more times because it's gonna result 
and such a better tasting product. It's just gonna have a better texture. You're going to get more flavor in each bite and it's worth, it's worth the time. I've actually been working on a new garden design at my old property, I had just a small front garden and it was absolutely beautiful and I really loved it. And here I have a lot more land, but with that land comes a lot of responsibility and it also comes with predators <laughs> for the garden. Like deer have been a total complete pain in my butt. Um, when you spend a lot of time and money sowing like literally sowing seeds and deer have ate everything or another thing that's happened a lot is our chicken pen isn't as good as what it could be and we haven't had the time just yet to build a new pen and the chickens get out and they will completely destroy a garden bed and that's been a huge problem so we've working, been working on containing animals and designing fences and i originally had designed a fence that was going to be eight foot tall so that would mean i would need 11 to about 10 foot a minimum of a 10 foot pole every eight foot so the design that I have was going to call for 38 of these posts. And I did the math on how much it was going to cost and just materials for this fence. And I have a trip coming up here in October. And I really am not going to be able to buy 38 four by four posts for this project. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to build a temporary electric fence um, and that is going to hopefully keep the goats out and deter deer as much as possible. It will be, it will only be a four foot electric fence and a deer can totally jump over that sucker like literally no problem um but i'm hoping that will at least slow them down and i'm also going to be building we have a table saw now which is awesome so we can mill out our own one by ones or one by twos and that is really good to make a like a chicken run not sure. <laughs> That's going to be really good to be able to make uh, garden boxes that go over the raised garden beds. So I can place that box on top of some of these beds and plant it out. We are going to be working on getting just the staples planted out. One thing that we had awesome success with was onions. And that is 100% due to that 1870s homestead. She um, had this video and it was called How to Grow Big Onions. And I did every single thing that she said to do. And I had huge onions. I don't want to go in the pantry right now to show you guys. But I grew like 20 pounds of onions. And I was really, really happy. One of our biggest onion is this big round. It was awesome. So we'll be growing a lot of onions, a lot of garlic, potatoes, and peas, and carrots. So, all right. So having, I won't have to have those boxes over like the garlic and the onions. I don't believe that the deer got into the garlic, garlic and onions. So I don't think it'll be a problem. Okay. Just kind of getting all this stuff mixed up. So all I have to do now is add in some salt and pepper and it actually calls for red wine vinegar so I'm kind of interested to see how that goes. I hope I have enough. Let me see what the acidity level is on this. I'm actually three-fourths cup short on my vinegar so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use white vinegar.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the oven. The recipe calls for it to be cooked on the stove, but I don't have a pan big enough, so I'm just gonna throw it in the oven. It's a 400 degree oven, and once it boils, I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. And then once that 10 minutes is up, I'm gonna pull it out of the oven, let it cool for five minutes, my jars out, and start canning it up. <laughs> But as of right now, my kitchen is disgusting. So I am going to spend a few minutes cleaning everything up and getting my jars ready. So by the time this is out of the oven, I have all my jars ready to go and everything will be all set for the water bath canning process that I will be doing later on tonight. I just pulled this out of the oven and I ended up keeping it in the oven quite a bit longer than I had initially planned. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a little gentle mix and I am going to take my electric thermometer and measure the temperature inside. I'm going for at least, I want it to be at least about 170 degrees. I'm really not big on having a bunch of kitchen gadgets that we never use, um, but there are a few things that I think are really important. And one of those is an electric thermometer. Um, or maybe even like a candy thermometer, or like something that you can count on and calibrate um, is really important. So dead center, my internal temperature is about 183 and I'm happy with that. And on the outside edges, I'm pushing like 190, 209. So it's plenty hot. I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side and let it cool down for about five minutes. And while it's cooling down, I'm gonna go ahead and put my clean jars into the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and actually put my oven on 200. I'm gonna go ahead and open the door for about a minute and kind of let that temperature drop down. So I'm like super cold, so I'm really happy that my oven is right here. I was doing some research in the book. Now you can put tomato sauces, tomato, tomato juice, tomato paste, anything tomato product in a quart jar and the processing time is not much different from a quart to a pint. So this needs to process in a pint jar for 15 minutes. I'm using quart jars so I'm going to do 25 minutes. I don't recommend doing this because it's very important you follow the recipe. And while you might not think it'd make a big deal, you'd be surprised. Even things like gallon jars, you, you could not, not everything can be processed in a bigger jar. So I cannot process potatoes in a gallon jar, but I could process really acidic foods like juices, like tomato juice or other products like that and that's because of the surface area and how much pressure and heat it takes to get into that internal temperature to get that high enough so it's safe. Um, I feel very confident water bath canning these in a quart jar for 10 minutes longer than a pint jar because it is so acidic and I common to process tomatoes in quart jars so that's what I'm going to be doing. I would typically use a pint jar except when I was planning out my pantry, because I have a family of four, I opted to get more quart jars than pints because we use that. You know, a pint of peas is enough to feed my youngest daughter by herself in just one sitting. So it was more cost effective for me to buy quart jars because a quart is basically like two pints than it was for me to buy pint jars. So I don't have enough pint jars for this, but I have enough quarts, so, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I just pulled out seven of these quarts and I'm gonna go ahead and get my other seven quarts out of the oven. The oven is on 200 degrees. It's important to put hot liquids into a hot jar. And this is kind of cooled down a little bit, but it's still warm enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and get those into the carrier and we'll let these process for about 25 minutes. I just pulled these jars out of the oven and they're pretty warm. So I'm going to go ahead and get my funnel on each one. And I will ladle the salsa into them. I 
took a 25 pound box of tomatoes and turned it into 11 quarts of salsa and I could not be more happy. It is absolutely delicious. It is fresh. It is light. I'm really glad I got the seeds out because it's not too spicy at all. These 11 quarts will be able to last my family for about six to eight months and I am so excited. If you guys have ever canned salsa, let me know how that went. Leave me a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. That's all I have. Bye!